There you go. Welcome to Art 244. So, you know, if you don't feel super confident in your sculpting abilities and you've been a little bit frustrated with this process getting started, doing smaller things might be the ticket. They might be the answer. I was going to try to blast out a frog tonight and try to talk about tiny things, little things that are that are cute, small and fast and also cheap to cast because being cheap I'm all about being cheap. I'm a pretty cheap guy. Um, if anybody wants to uh, chime in for any reason, if you want to ask me questions, um, chime in, stuff like that, you sure can. Oh, I see something in the chat. So I'm going to go turn on my chat button. Okay, Kayla is, and, and Halen are both with me. Oh my God. Is Kayla Young even in the class? I got to go see. Who is this new person? Well, there she is, Kayla Young, right there. Welcome to the party. All right, that's good. So um, I took a chunk of wax out of my hot box, which is just off camera here. I've got my hot box on, I've got the lamp lit. And so I, it's slowly, painfully slowly, warming up the wax. And so, you know, I've got a particle. I'm gonna start with just this particle. I'm gonna try to turn it into um, a frog, like right before your eyes and that kind of thing. I have a um, quick question. Yeah, Aurora, what's up? Um, so if we want to put our like finished sculptures on something that's not just a chunk of bronze, yeah. Um, what metals work well to like weld bronze, like a small bronze base onto a metal? Does that make sense? Because like, for instance, a candle holder that has a metal top, would you be able to? like weld them together? You know, that's a good question. It really all depends on the metal. Um, I, I, if, I, if the metal is really unknown, it's, um, it's kind of scary because there are a lot of pot metals out there, models that, metals that contain a lot of tin um, sometimes are used for candlestick holders. Um, if you can grind on the candlestick holder on the bottom where it's, un, where it's invisible and nobody can see the grind marks, to um, kind of take off the finish and any tarnish and stuff on there to see what color it is, that's good. Uh, if you can stick a magnet to it and to see whether it is, you know, some kind of either steel or iron, but usually they're not, they're mostly non-ferrous, you know, that's another way to check. Um, I can weld with bronze and I can weld with bronze welding rod. Uh, I can weld bronze successfully to copper and to steel both mild steel and stainless steel, but things get really dicey when it's like pot metal because the melting point is so much lower on a pot metal. Um, those things usually melt at somewhere around 1000 degrees to 1400 degrees. Aluminum, I can't weld to aluminum. That's another thing that has about a 1400 degree melting point. Bronze has about a 2000 degree melting point. And so I need to be able to weld it to other metals that kind of are in the 2000 degree range or higher. Um, so usually uh, my, ch my choices are stainless or mild steel. So um, follow up question. Yeah. If you make like a bronze base that would fit, cause like for instance, this one has kind of like a curve into it. If you make a bronze base that fits in here and what, and like make that with the sculpture attached to it, can I use like a JB weld kind of a thing to weld it on or like to not actually weld it, but to yeah. attach it to the base? Yeah. Um, could you show me the piece and what it was going to fit into again? Um, so you've got that and it goes there. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. We could, we could JB weld it. Um, okay. I could make a small round, a small round piece of bronze that would fit on top of that thing. And then you could J JB weld the small round piece with the dancer welded to it. Yeah. Uh, you could JB weld that on too. So that okay, would be cool. Number. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's all my questions. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to replace the pin with me. So I'm, I'm uh, kind of jamming here on my uh, froggy thing. And so I'm going to change uh, camera angles to um, uh, look, look down on this whole pro project here, this whole process. So I've got something that just looks like a misshapen couple of lumps in my hand. But let's think for a moment. A frog has kind of a long and actually thin body in the middle. 
and fairly good sized legs on either side. So this is one of those folded up haunches of a frog on this side. And this is the beginning of one on the other side. And so I'm going to take this you know, abstraction, this horrible misshapen abstraction of a frog and kind of blast one out really quick here. So now I've got two um, kind of parallel forms that are here on the back side of the frog with um, the possibility of the head of the frog up here. And so, and these two lumps that I just stuck onto the head of the frog could also start to um, suggest the idea of the eyes. And on the frog, the eyes kind of stick out the top of the head a little bit so that the frog can sit there at um, the surface of the water and look over the top of the water. So I'm gonna take some more wax and jam them on there to kind of start to make those a little bit bigger. So from the side, it still doesn't look like much. From the, from the top, it's really starting to look froggish, which I don't know if you care about such things. But actually, frogs are cool. And little bronze sculptures of frogs are really cool. And they're super cheap to make. So I'm going to uh, just build a little bit more of kind of like the um, spinal bone that sticks out the back of the frog and kind of creates doesn't stick out the back of the frog, but it, it sticks up and it kind of creates that ridge across the top of the frog's back. And so now I've got, you know, this major uh, rear leg muscle kind of coming back to the knee. And actually the knee, the two knees are at the back of the frog because like all other, you know, four-legged animals, they're back legs fold backwards so that um, they can they can walk, they can jump, they can do all that stuff. So these are the thighs coming back to the knee and then the foot is gonna come across from underneath and the foot is gonna be kind of sticking out, you know, just about here. And of course it's a webbed foot. So it has like three toes or something and with webbing in between and it's gonna be kind of cute and cool and everything. And once I get the frog put together, it can be just this little frog that sits here, you know, on the table and kind of, it can, it can, it can kind of sit up and stretch up into space at an angle. It can, I, I could even do this where it is jumping and I can have its legs extended if I wanted to, and maybe just have one leg just a little bit lower, one foot a little bit lower than the other. And that lower foot could be the thing that I actually um, weld onto a base element so that this extended frog jumping could have its legs kind of all the way back down here on the base on a small um, square of, of uh, material or something. And we could have captured the frog in mid jump, which is always kind of cool to do because it's something that you can do in bronze is, um, you know, kind of approximate the idea of motion. Um, Aurora is doing it with her dancers, a uh, uh, dancer up on one toe, um, doing a pirouette or some other kind of a dance move. And if you guys are all frustrated dancers because you didn't get to do very much uh, ballet or modern dance when you were kids, you can now you know, sculpt yourself a dancer and uh, kind of get to that place that you always wanted to be, you know, beautiful, graceful, all of that kind of stuff. I loved to dance when I was a kid. I didn't dance except for, you know, couples dancing in high school and at dances and stuff. But, you know, dancing was fun when I was young and cute and small and athletic and everything. Um, but I talk too much, don't I? Let's see. So, okay. So, and now, you know, I have to look up every once in a while and see, check the participants list and see if anybody's got their microphone unmuted or check the chat to see if anybody typed anything in the chat. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to type a volume, of course, into my thing so that I can adjust the volume, click on adjust volume. Hey, look at that. I'm all the way up. So I guess I can hear you guys about as good as I'm going to hear you. Okay. And now I'm back. All right, frogs. Whose idea was it to do a frog anyway? Does anybody have any um, big cool thing that you are working on right now, especially if it differs from what we kind of reported out um, as, a, as possible projects last Wednesday? 
if you've had an epiphany or a revelation, and epiphanies and revelations are the same thing. If you had an epiphany about something that you want to make a sculpture out of, and you're really you know jazzed about it, please share it with us because we love, we are inspired sometimes by each other's um, inspirations and epiphanies and revelations. So a revelation and an epiphany don't have to be a religious experience. Sometimes they can be any kind of a creative experience, which can be cool. So this frog, let's see if I can get it up here. It's getting there, actually. In the time that we've been talking, I have got this frog, and it is squatting, and it's got its two little feet that it doesn't look like anything from the underside, so I shouldn't even show you the underside. But from the sides and from the top, this frog is looking like something, and I've only been at this for about, you know, 10 minutes or so. Um, now, your mileage may vary because, you know, I've been to this rodeo before it's not my first rodeo and so I can do sculptures relatively fast and it probably makes you mad that you know Mr. Fritz can blast out a sculpture really fast but you know you can you can just about rough anything out in almost no time the thing that takes a little bit more time is then trying to refine all these forms and blend all of these lumpy things together to try to get it uh, refined into the final um, thing that you want, smoothed out, whatever. Um, I still wanna have you guys try to embrace the idea of lumpy though, if at all possible. The additive process, you know, all of the random edges and lumps that it creates while you're putting stuff together, sometimes can really um, be quite beautiful and, it, and we should try to capitalize on those happy accidents that happen in art and not just um, try to blend and smooth everything away to try to make everything perfect. So having said all that, hi. Um, this uh, Invent Oregon thing kind of has uh, eaten my life. It hijacked my, my uh, basic design class. And because now we're having to do all kinds of other research, the uh, juror, who was judging us last week, asked us all kinds of questions about efficacy of masks and filters and stuff like that. They want us to um, go to the hospital and the clinic and ask the um, nurses that work there how they like um, wearing those um, Olsen style masks and you know, you know, how do they work for uh, breathability and comfort and all that kind of stuff? And do they have any suggestions for any um, changes or upgrades on that? Um, they're just kind of making extra work for us, which, you know, nobody likes it when people make extra work for you. Okay, so in, in, in 10 minutes, I have a roughed out frog here that I'm going to set down on the table and talk about. And you can, with these, with these animals, you can always... Um, um, emphasize some things, which is like abstracting them. We've got the scare quotes going on here. You know, you can abstract things by making the feet bigger, making the frog longer, you know, making the eyes bigger than a normal frog would have. It doesn't have to conform to any kind of actual biological frog. This can be your, um, your idea of what a frog is. And I know that that flies totally in the face of what I've been asking you guys to do, which is to uh, research your thing and try to find images of it that you can try to copy and use as visual uh, reference material. But um, you can do all of that. And then still, if when you are um, blasting out your actual piece and it's in the abstract and it's in the rough, if you like what you see, in the abstract and in the rough. You can keep it rough and you can keep it abstract. And also if it's a little bit out of proportion when you are beginning to blast it out, you can keep it a little bit out of proportion. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Um, of course, that's probably one of the hardest lessons that there is in art is trying to be able to um, be okay with things that aren't exactly perfect and uh, being okay with abstraction. 
I fought that my entire time in college and for the next 30 years of my career. So I understand if it's something that's difficult to wrap your mind around and something that's hard to appreciate. But that's why we teach art history and that's why we keep talking about the possibility of abstraction with students so that you might get a little bit more turned on to it. And then it just opens up more possibilities for you. Um, so in while I was just talking about that stuff, I actually took the head and front end torso of the frog and I bent it up like this. So now the frog's um, head has been lifted up out of the plane of it just laying down flat on the, on the tabletop. And so you can see it from the top here. It looks like it's a little bit shortened a little bit when viewed from the side. Its face and its head are angling up away from the legs and stuff, which gets it, which you know, breaks it out of that one single plane. That's what I like about the frog better than the turtle. The turtle is impossible to kind of break out of a plane unless you take its flippers and kind of, you know, kind of go down with the flippers, maybe like this, so that when viewed from the front, you can kind of see that the flippers are hanging down. A little bit and then that breaks it out of that single plane of uh, just everything being in alignment with the shell now the flippers are hanging down a little bit if this thing sets on the ground on the tabletop or something there's actually space underneath the shell and then the the piece you know presents so much nicer when it's just sitting on the coffee table or on a bookshelf or something because it looks like the the um uh, the little guy is in motion, like he's either um, doing his little uh, floppy dance, trying to get out of the nest and trying to get down to the water's edge uh, right after hatching, or it looks like he's swimming in the water. So, you know, trying to do that, trying to animate the piece by getting it out of, you know, one single plane and trying to uh, get some kind of implied movement going on in the piece is really kind of a cool idea. So, got a frog, got a let's call it a baby sea turtle, shall we? It's a baby sea turtle because it just doesn't get any babier than that. Okay, so I'm going to put those down and I'm going to maybe kind of work on this uh, human figure sculpture a little bit and try to blast it out somewhat. Um, it's uh, seasonal allergy time for me and other allergy sufferers. And so I can't be talking a whole lot because I could just start to lose my voice with um, congestion and stuff. So I'm probably gonna um, quiet down quite a bit for a little bit while the sculpting happens. Please feel free for you guys to like turn on your mics and talk to each other. Like if you are not in the same room with people but you know them and they are on your sports team or in your other class or something like that and you wanna say, hey, how's it going? And how's your sculpture going? And you know, kind of stuff like that, or you want to even talk about that crazy Dr. Metzger and how awful, you know, geology is right now. You can do that. I won't tell anybody. I won't even listen. Um, I actually have a question for you. I know you just, were just saying that you wanted to rest your voice, but um, per se, I have, I, I sculpted a little parrot. Um, that's what I've been working on for like my first little sculpture. Um, but I don't want it to like stand up. I was wondering if I could like somehow like hang it, if I could like put like a hole in the head, would I be able to like put something in there to like a little hook to hang it? Yes, absolutely. What we usually do with a sculpture is, um, so could you repeat what it is? Did you say parrot? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bird. It's a little bird, fantastic. It is the, does the bird have its wings down at its side or are they outstretched like it's flying? They're down at its side. So it's just like one little, it looks like a turd because you can't quite see. Like <laughs> um, that's literally every single time I've showed it to somebody, they're like, oh wow, it looks like a turd. I'm like, hey, thank you very much. I appreciate that. But um, yeah, it's just like one little piece and the tail straight down. So I didn't want to like make it like stand because I didn't want to like mount it to like a branch or something like that. I just was like, I want to hang it. So. Okay. Yes, you can. Um, I'm going to grab a needle tool out of the box over here 
And let's pretend that this needle tool is like a piece of eighth inch welding rod that's made out of bronze, the same material that the bronze casting is going to make be made out of. So if I wanted to um, have my turtle kind of look like it's floating or uh, swimming, I could have the base element down here. I can have a piece of welding rod going up to the turtle. I can drill a hole in the bottom of the turtle and I can put that in at, um, at an angle if I want, or I can mount it straight up from the bottom like this. And usually a bronze welding rod is very minimal. It's just a little linear, linear element and it can suspend your thing off the deck like three or four inches with a little, you know, um, base element down here. It could either be a wood block. I have black walnut that I can help you guys turn into base elements so we can make a tiny little, you know, like three inch by three inch wood block and then drill a hole in the wood block and have the bronze welding rod come out of that and then drill a hole in the bottom of the bird and have the bronze welding rod go into the hole. And that's how we could suspend it off of the, off of the deck. So something like that. Does that help? That does help, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. And I don't mind talking when I'm answering a question, but you guys don't wanna hear me just prattle on. So I'm gonna to try to not prattle very much, but that was cool. And if you, anybody else has any questions about the process or about your sculpting or anything, don't hesitate to ask. Um, please be willing to like uh, turn on your webcam and so that we can see your, your project if you wanna hold it up to the camera and ask a question about it, that'd be fantastic. I was actually gonna ask Abby, um, have you started working on your two people yet? I have not, okay. I'm starting it really soon. I just started working at the human being. So this is, today was my sixth day. So I'm training sure. right now, uh, which actually was what I was gonna talk about. I will not be present for Wednesday class. I'll be working. Um, but yes, I'll be starting that soon. So, yeah. I was just curious because, like, I don't know. It sounded exciting when you said it. I'm very excited to start it. Um, so, yeah, thank you for asking. Well, totally off topic, I can tell you guys that um, um, I'm doing other things on the side too. Uh, so um, I'm for 4-H, I've been a uh, shooting sports instructor uh, and coach for the last uh, seven or eight years or so for my son's 4-H um, team or whatever. And he qualified to go to nationals uh, two years ago in rifle, small bore rifle. And of course it was canceled last summer because of the virus and the pandemic. And so it's on for this summer and nationals for 4-H shooting sports is gonna be in the Grand Island, Nebraska on June um, 20th to the 25th. And so just about uh, you know five days after we quit school here and everybody graduates, I have to be you know like in the Grand Island, Nebraska with my shooting team. Um, we, uh, we practice every weekend, um, up near Lebanon, Oregon, um, uh, at somebody's farm, you know, one of the team members has a grandparents who have a farm. And so we've set up a, a private range up there so that we can do small bore rifle and, you know, do our shooting sports stuff up there. But that's just a, you know, one of those extracurricular activities and, uh, it's kind of fun. So I just thought I'd share because it's been on my mind lately because we just got back yesterday from a shooting, a, a rifle um, practice yesterday. So I was having a really hard time doing like facial structure on the sculpture itself. So I'm doing something, I don't know if you would even recommend it, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, I made like a tiny little mask and I'm working on a tool so that I can just keep it close to me without having to hold the rest of my sculpture. And it's been helpful. So when you get to faces, Abby, if, <laughs> if they're driving you crazy, 
doing a little mask might be helpful. Could you hold that up one more time? I didn't see it. I'm trying to pin. It's like what? on a ball tool. And it's just like, I measured the face and then made a little like mask of clay and I'm building on that and I'm going to weld it to the actual sculpture. Oh, that's a good way of trying to make a small thing. All right. So you've got all kinds of control over it right there because it's mounted on that ball form yeah. and you can get right to it. You don't have to hold your sculpture and uh, impart all of that heat from your hands into the sculpture and have it falling apart all the time. This yeah. just isolates the face. That's I was, wonderful. I was breaking a bunch of stuff when I was trying to do it. So I was like, I'm going to try a different one. That's good. Um, yes. Um, what's the mother in, of invention? Um, what's that? I forget. Not like Necessity. Necessity is the mother of invention. And you oh. needed to figure out how to make that work. That was good. I think laziness is the mother of invention. Laziness? Yeah. No, that's not how it works. Who was trying to make an octopus in here? Somebody is trying to make um, an octopus. Who's that? I was I was trying, and it turned out to look like a little alien thing going on here. Yeah, octopus do look like little alien things going on though. Hold on, let me um, click on your video. It's just this little, like little like ugly little alien head thing. Oh my god! Head. Okay. Um, so we're the I'm working on my head. butterfly because that's less stressful. Yeah, that's super true. Um, the eyes, were the, the balls on the end supposed to be the eyes? Yes. Okay. So I, I love sculpting octopus. I'm, I've done one for a commission before. And the things are fucking weird to sculpt. Yes, sir. So this one was made out of air dry clay, but it fell apart basically but the the head and the eyes of the octopus are super strange you think the eyes are like lower but they're higher up on the piece so if you do want to get back into the octopus sculpt like building up and out and then putting the eyes kind of on that corner might be helpful I don't know if that helps you or not but that, that helps a lot actually that's cool oh thank you I made one out of like actual clay after this because this one, like I said, it just completely fell apart, but. Oh. How long did that take you to do? Cause that's sick. Um, well, I'm ridiculous. So I have really bad sleeping issues. So it took like two days, but I didn't sleep like at all in those two days. So yeah, but the other one took probably like a week and a half cause I made myself take breaks and then it took a long time to kiln because you have to wait for it to completely dry out. And then the painting process took like another week. So like three months-ish, but it was for a commission piece. And so I, I absolutely loved doing it. And I've been considering making another tiny sculpture of an octopus when I heard Kylie wanted, is it Kylie? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I was pronouncing it right. Um, I wanted to like try it because I was like, well, wax could be fun. But yeah, I, I could see how it'd be frustrating. <laughs> a butterfly does seem easier. But, well, uh, and you went and did all of the suction cups, which is like 10,000 hours of just tedium. Oh and God, I yeah. would, of course, probably re um, tell people if you're going to do a small octopus to just make the tentacles round on the top and, and make them flat on the bottom surface and kind of forget about the suction cups because you don't have to do all of that texture and all of those tiny little forms. And that's okay. one abstract, um, you know, shortcut that you can do on, on an octopus. Definitely. Um, the, the way that I did those on the bigger ones, it was like, hundreds of these little balls that range from very small to pretty large. And then I went in with um, like a 
water slip mixture and uh, end of a paintbrush and like squish each and single every one of them on. So it was a lot of work. <laughs> but my whole thing is like, if I'm sculpting animals, I want them to be as realistic as possible. Like I've made hummingbirds and a um, whole bunch of other stuff. So it's the details are what do it for me. Well, I always thought that the details scared everybody else off. So I'm, again, I'm amazed at what um, your motivations are and what really interests you, but that's, that's awesome. That's cool. I'm the kind of guy who t tries to take the path of least resistance on the one hand, but when you're doing human figures, nothing is easy. So there's no path of least resistance. And I suppose with animals too, when you really get into the details and you are, you know, you're motivated, you're obsessed, you're compelled to do things because you're OCD, you're obsessive compulsive, not you, but people in general. Um, you know, artists are, yeah. <laughs> artists are compelled to do the things that we do. I mean, it's not like we do it because it's logical or because it makes sense or because it makes money. We do them because we must do them because um, we're driven to. And so it is, the, it is the realm of the OCD person. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's, it was very entertaining, especially doing that, uh, the hummingbird that I was talking about. My mom wanted to make one. And so I was like, I'll teach you how to do it. And so then we start on the hummingbird and we get like the main shape down and then we start moving on to working on like the feathers and stuff. And she's sitting here and she's like, this is ridiculous. Like we're spending hours making feathers on this hummingbird. And I was like, yeah, but the end product would be so great. And she's like, next time you have me like teach me how to make something, just make it easier. I was like, okay. <laughs> But they turned out super cute. Yeah, feathers are another thing that can be hours, you know, of very detailed work. And if, I had a student two years ago who wanted to do a Pegasus. And so she sculpted the horse and then she sculpted the wings and she did individual feathers on every, you know, on both wings on both sides. And then she wanted to make four of them. So we made molds of the objects and cast them in wax so she had all of these wax castings and then we had to go back and chase all the wax castings and sculpt individual feathers into individual wings again on four of them because it didn't come out sharp enough in the wax in the casting of the wax from the mold so yeah obsession is a fun thing isn't it <laughs> I don't know when we're going to be able to um, get together as a class. I thought it was going to happen pretty quickly after we got together uh, for spring class, spring quarter. Um, of course, you know, there's the pandemic. But last Wednesday, we went down from um, uh, extreme risk down to high risk, uh, which was good. And I was kind of hoping that if we continue to make progress the next time that they come out with a um, rating for everybody that we might get down to uh, moderate risk. And at that point we could start, you know, coming in for classes. So I'm thinking, you know, next Wednesday will be the next uh, report out from the governor's office on the county by county risk assessment for uh, infection rates. And so we'll see if we can get together after that. In the meantime, we are just sculpting on this stuff and we don't have to be in class for this. Um, sometimes it's easier to just, you know, have, have your tiny little mess like in a shoebox or something and get it out for class and also try to get it out on the weekends and make some sculpture progress on it if you can. Sometimes if you're not an art major, you don't realize how, what a wonderful, um, respite this is from doing homework for and other things so um, i like art because 
when I'm doing art, then I uh, can forget about homework for a while and just, you know, lose myself in the art, which is kind of nice. Um, it's also kind of a terrible, you know, crutch and burden uh, for academics because, you know, you don't get your homework done, but you get a lot of art done and that's kind of cool. Um, I have a question. When it comes down to like cast, or not casting, but the like ceramic coating on the wax, um, are we going to be helping you do those things to our sculptures or do we just kind of bring you the wax thing and show up and there's a cast made of it? I'd like you to help. Um, okay, cool. And so I'll try to schedule that when the time comes because the more I can get you guys doing it, the less I have to do it, which is always nice. Right. Well, I was just curious because if it was more of like a, you had generally just done it yourself, I was going to ask if I could come in and at least watch the process because yeah, I, I want to learn how to do all that. Not that I can bronze cast at my house, but it'd be... Well, you actually could. <laughs> you could build a small foundry in your garage and you could do this at your house. It, it takes a bit of know-how. Um, but it is possible and so if you you know if you enjoy other kinds of things like welding and fabrication right. and, we do you know, have like a welder here already so oh, cool all right and i have that little tiny kiln but i don't think it gets hot enough for all this no not for this um but it's possible to even build your own uh, bronze casting furnace and uh and melt metal at 2000 degrees in your in your driveway or in your backyard it's possible. There's all kinds of, you know, now there's YouTube videos. God, if there was YouTube when I went to graduate school 30 years ago, I might not have gone to grad school. I might have just, you know, gone to the, you know, school of YouTube and uh, learned all of this stuff on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube's I, definitely a big helper. I really don't even know, you know, how colleges and universities are going to keep going because so many people are learning so much stuff on YouTube and even the, the, the teachers and the grad students and everything else are putting lots of lessons and stuff online and sharing it out with the public. And, um, you know, that can just about undermine the whole idea of higher education, except that you do get a degree from these places yeah i was gonna say youtube doesn't give me that magic piece of paper that says i know how to do the thing yep the magic paper is important it is you know what i see that we're coming up on seven o'clock here i'm gonna be wrapping up my piece of this this evening um I, I, this has been the best though you guys talking is good asking questions is wonderful I just, I love this. So I want to encourage this as much as possible. Um, so thank you for coming and uh, being part of the class again. And uh, we're going to do this again on Wednesday. Same thing, um, remotely online as we keep trying to make our sculptures and keep kind of roughing these things out. Um, this is why I do um this part of the process for five or six weeks because these sculptures take time they take time to do and, and we do expect you to be putting in six hours a week on this you know um you know two hours a week is just the the video stuff where i'm doing most of the talking and the demonstrating and presenting um you are you know supposed to be doing four hours of sculpting on your own per week and that's the lab portion of the lecture lab class so um you know no pressure or anything but you know do try to manage your time throughout the week so that you can get some sculpting done in the quiet of a saturday or sunday afternoon or something when um when the roommates are out playing or carousing or something like that that'd be good well, I think that is going to wrap it up for me. I'm going to just check and see if anybody else has a question. Um, Abby, what's up? Oh, well, I'm just going to say again, I won't be here Wednesday. So I hope you guys have a great week. All right. I'll forget that, but um, I won't hold it against you. And I really so appreciate you uh, telling me and sharing with me and being a, a good um, conscientious member of the class. That's really cool. 
So um, I'm going to wrap it up for now. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Um, thank you for being there. Have a good middle of your week. And we'll see you again Wednesday night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.